What up, y'all? We back, we back, we just keep coming at ya. We got another video. It's your boy, Mr. Vaughn, Mr. Vaughn's channel, Sweatbox. Today, we talking, yeah, 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 yeah. We talking NBA. We talking hoops, and we talking who's the best team in the NBA right now. Now, this is my first NBA video, so uh, we're going to take a little bit, we're going to take a couple minutes to talk about this. Now, when you mention NBA, first thing everybody wants to talk about, Cleveland, Golden State. Obviously, clearly, those are the two best teams in the league. Um, last two, met in the finals for the last two seasons, probably going to be in the finals again this year. But, are they? Is there anybody who can really give these teams any kind of a run? Is there anybody who can really give these teams any kind of competition? Let's start in the East. Cleveland, of course, clear-cut favorite. Who, first of all, let's just talk about that. Who would have thought? For those of you who have followed the NBA for years, I'm talking before LeBron was in the league, who would have ever thought you would say the words, the Cleveland Cavs are clearly the best team in the Eastern Conference, maybe in the league? I never thought I'd say those words. Shouts out to King James. LeBron, get him done. you've done the impossible. You've made the Cleveland Cavaliers relevant. Very relevant. You guys are defending NBA champs, so salute to that. Now, are they better than Golden State? If you look at that game on Christmas, that game on Christmas says they are. A lot of people are questioning Steph Curry, saying he's not playing like he is. He's not really fitting into the new system with Kevin Durant. Are you serious? They're 30-5. and five. Let me check that real quick. Yeah, they're 30-5. and five. I'm pretty sure they're pretty good. Um, so is there anybody who can beat Cleveland and Golden State? In the East, I'm going to say no. Shouts out to Toronto. You guys are playing some good ball. Do I think it's good enough to beat Cleveland in a seven-game series? No. I don't even really think it's that close. Uh, DeMar DeRozan and company. Uh, I mean, man, they play some good ball. And they're, the, and they're clearly the second-best team in the Eastern Conference. But that gap. Between the number two and the number one seed is pretty big. It's pretty big. So, uh, anybody else in the Eastern? No, there's nobody else. Boston's playing well, but still. The team that I thought was going to actually be really good was Chicago. And they are struggling right now. They're one game below 500 right now. They started out great when they had a bunch of home games to start the season out. But they have struggled. They struggled. D-Wade is not, I mean... Um, Jimmy Butler's, I mean, Jimmy Butler balled the other night, put up, what, 52, 54? I'm not sure which, I think it was 52, but uh, it might have been 54. Either way, Jimmy Butler's balling, and he's the guy on that team, but uh, they, need, they need a little bit more. Rondo's not really gelling with the team like we hoped he would. You know Rondo's a head case, man. I mean, the dude loves the game, and he's a great point guard, a little bit past his prime, but he's still got a lot left in the tank, but... um. I don't know, man. I really thought Chicago would be better. Another team that I thought would be better, and I know I'm going to get... What were you thinking? But I thought the Knicks were going to be better. Picking up D. Rose, and D. Rose has been pretty healthy. I mean, he hasn't gotten hurt. He's been in there, and he's been he's been a factor. But obviously, are the days of the MVP candidate D. Rose really, really done? I mean, that sucks to say. We've seen, te we've seen players come back from injuries before. Look at Grant Hill, but after even Grant Hill, he was never the same after those knee surgeries. And he had a great career. He had a long career once he finally got over those injuries, but he was never the Grant Hill that we saw in Detroit who was averaging almost a triple-double. So, uh, yeah, Chicago and New York have been disappointments for me. Uh, the team has been the surprise. Milwaukee, the great freak, 22 years old, and he's playing some grown man ball. He's playing some grown man ball. Do I think, obviously, I don't think Milwaukee's on the level to compete with uh, Cleveland. I don't think they're even on the level to compete with Toronto. But they are a good team, and that's a team to look to in the future. But uh, out, out east, that's about it. 
that's really about it. Now you go out west, and you've got uh, clearly uh, um, Golden State's the they're, they're they're the team to beat out west. Thirty and five, three of the three of the top fifteen players in the league. And I'll say it: I think uh, I think Clay Thompson is a top fifteen player. Obviously, Steph and, and KD are top fifteen players. I think. Uh, Clay Thompson is a top fifteen player, especially with how he shoots the ball and his 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 uh his defensive basketball is I think is underrated. I think he's a good player on the on the defensive end of the ball. Um, who's competing with them? Who is actually competing with Golden State on that on on the west in the Western Conference? Obviously, San Antonio Popovich is going to have his guys playing top tier basketball. What are they twenty eight? They're like twenty eight and seven. Well, let me take a quick look. look. No, I, I was right. Nailed it. Twenty eight and seven. So they're right on a they're right on Golden State's heels. Blew out Golden State in the opening game of the season. San Antonio's going to be there in the end. So you got to give San Antonio the credit they deserve. It's the gap between San Antonio and um, Golden State isn't nearly as big as the gap between Cleveland and Toronto, in my opinion. I think San Antonio is a lot closer uh, to being able to beat. And I, I mean, if you were to put San Antonio and Golden State in a seven game series right now. Could you definitively say that Golden State would beat them? I can't say that. Never, ever sleep on a Greg Popovich coach team. I mean, he they come to compete. Even without Tim Duncan, the greatest power forward to ever play the game, they are still championship contenders. Now, once you get past them, you have the Clippers, you have Houston, and you have OKC, and that's about it. Again, I'll talk about the Clippers. The Clippers, they have all the talent. Are they going to be able to put it together? I don't know. I'm going to – my gut tells me no. They have the all the weapons. They have Chris Paul's the greatest leader. He's, he's the best floor general in the NBA right now. Um, I just don't think they'll be able to get it done, especially with uh, against, against the Golden State and San Antonio. I think those teams are still better than the Clippers. Uh, Houston and OKC. In Houston and OKC, you have two guys in uh, James Harden and Russell Westbrook who are probably paying, who are probably playing the best basketball in the league right now. Those two guys are putting up ridiculous numbers, and they have both of their teams playing well. I mean, Houston's what? They're what are they? They're, they only really lost that. They're twenty-seven and nine. Excuse me. Sorry for that. Uh, Houston's right there, but if you ask me how I feel about Houston and the same with, and the same with Oklahoma City, they got a little their um, their uh, let me see what's up on twenty one and fourteen. So they're not not quite on the level of Houston, but I still put Oklahoma City and Houston in the same category as far as those type of teams. Why? Because I feel like the play of James Harden and the play of Russell Westbrook, while I think they are balling I don't think that type of play is sustainable and I definitely don't think that's the type of play that's going to win you a championship what type of play is that where you have one guy doing all the ball handling that being uh, Harden and Westbrook and then the rest of the guys just hope to get their shots where they can now I think Harden has a much better supporting staff than Westbrook does Westbrook is really the guy on that team he's it's him and a bunch of role players. But um, Houston uh, and Harden's just inability to play any kind of defense will always and forever, in my opinion, keep him from being an elite player. I mean, it's just ridiculous. But he can play some ball. I mean, the numbers he's putting up are undeniable. But yet and still, I do not think that style of play is sustainable or championship type of basketball. I think you have to get your teammates involved more. I think you have to be more of a cohesive team. You don't have to be, you can't just be James Harden and the guys. I think you need to be more of a team. And I don't, this is all my opinion, of course, obviously. I could be proven wrong. I don't think I'm going to be proven wrong, but I could be. So, um, yeah, while James Harden and, and Westbrook are putting up crazy numbers, numbers we haven't seen in a while as far as, Every every stat line. I mean, Russell Westbrook. James Harden had three triple doubles in a row. Russell Westbrook is almost averaging a triple double. I mean, these guys are balling. They're balling. But 
I've always said it about Russell Westbrook. I think the boy competes. He's got the heart of a competitor. He likes to compete. But I do not think he has the ability to make the rest of his players better. And that is what's going to keep him from winning the championship. I hope he proves me wrong because I don't dislike Russell Westbrook. I love his... Uh, I love the ferocious way that he plays the game. He's always in attack mode, and I like that. But he needs to become a better teammate. Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, sorry about that, folks. But I believe Russell Westbrook needs to be a better teammate. Same with James Harden. And James Harden needs to play defense. I mean, you look at how Russell plays defense. Come on, James. What are you doing? Play some defense. He's horrible on defense. There's no excuse for being that bad. <laughs> and uh, I think those two factors will keep either of those teams from making any serious headway in the playoffs. They might win a round. They might compete in the second round if they get there. But I don't think they're going to be a real threat to Golden State or San Antonio in the West. And I actually think even the Clippers might give them a hard time. What is the Clippers record? The Clippers record, right? I'm going to look it up real quick. Give me a second. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Yeah, right now the Clippers are 23-14. and 14. So it's tied in the loss column with Oklahoma City. Uh, two more wins in Oklahoma City. Uh, and five more losses than Houston. But if you were to ask me right now, do I think the Clippers are a better team than Houston? Yes, I think they're a better team than Houston. Does Houston have the best player out of those two teams? Absolutely. James Harden is the best player between uh, Houston and the Clippers. But let's see what happens if they match up in the playoffs. That's my opinion. And uh, that's about it. So as of right now, I'm going to give you my top five teams in the NBA. Starting with number five, I'm going to have to say it is... Number five, I'm going to put, I will put Toronto at number five as the fifth best team in the NBA. Number four, I'll go with, I'll go with Houston, even though I think the Clippers, even though I think, even though they have a better record than the Clippers, I'll put Houston as the number four team. I'll put the Clippers, no, I'm. that's wrong. Scratch all that. I'm going to go with Houston as the five team. Clippers as the four. Uh, yeah. Clippers as the four. San Antonio as the three. Cleveland as the two. And Golden State as the number one team in the NBA right now. So that's how I have that sitting. So, yeah. That's leaving... Um, that's leaving uh, Toronto just on the outside looking in. I probably have them as probably the number six seed, not even number six, maybe seven. But that's my top five, uh, top five teams in the NBA right now. So uh, there you go. Keep it locked right here to the channel, Mr. Vaughn's channel, Sweatbox for all things NBA, NFL, UFC. How we doing in sports? Check out the other sections. You know how we do. It's your boy, Mr. Vaughn. See y'all next time. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. And I'll holler back at y'all. Peace. I'm a girl. To the ends with you. I'm a girl. To the end with you. I'm a girl. To the end with you.